Hey everybody, it's Dave Isaacs with you, and today I want to take a look at a Creedence Clearwater classic, Green River. And we're looking primarily at the signature lick and then a couple of the fills that John Fogarty does in the course of the song. I'll also go over the basic chord changes. There is a bit more going on in the sense that there are variations to the main lick that he plays, but I want to focus on this primary one first. And once you've got that, going back and putting the pieces together to get the rest of it really shouldn't be very challenging. I should mention that to really play this correctly, you need to use your thumb and fingers, or a thumb pick and fingers, but for simplicity's sake, I'm going to stick with the flat pick, and I will talk a little bit about hybrid pick and finger technique. But let's take a look at this main lick here. One. As I said, if you really do it correctly, the thumb is thumping the low E underneath that. But as I said, let's keep it simple for right now. I'm sliding into a double stop that implies an E7 chord. This is very, very, very common. You've probably come across it before. And I'm using my middle and ring fingers on fret 3 of the B string and fret 4 of the G string. So middle and ring side by side, two adjacent strings, two adjacent frets, three and four, and sliding into that from the fret below. And doing it again. Four hits each time. Here's the timing. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, and two, and... Now that slide is striking the third string while the ring finger is still here at the fourth fret and then an immediate slide back and it's not the kind of slide where we hear the starting note it's a grace note a gliss slide really where what we're really looking to hear is simply the connection the sound we come off the string. So this is a little tricky to coordinate if you're not familiar with this technique. But watch again. And then we close the door, we finish that little phrase with a hammer on on the D string. O2. Oh, two. One, two, three, four. One and two and slide open, open hammer. And then On that, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, a one, two, a three, and four, and one, a two, a three, and four, and so one, two, and hammer, and, and notice the off beats there, and also how that impacts my picking. One, two, and three, and so that is going here on the 2nd fret of the D string to the open A, hammer the 2nd fret of the A string, and then the open D. I'm picking that one. Down, up, hammer, up, up. Notice the offbeat at the end. One, two, and three, and four, and one. Two, up, up, up. Down strokes, all downs. I'm repeating the downstrokes there because I want a level of uniformity to the attack. It doesn't sound right if I alternate. Aside from the fact that, as I said, the original is plucked with the fingers. So that's going to be a more consistent attack to begin with. So here's the real opening. Here's the full opening riff. One, two, three, four, one. Could 
finger it this way with one and two. Either one of those works just fine. Let's take a look at the chord structure of the tune before we go back and fill in John Fogarty's lead licks. We're just going to work off an E7 vamp. I'm going to suggest a couple of options here. Here's a plain old open position E. You can make this an E7, you may know how to do this already, by lifting the ring finger and adding your pinky to the second string at the third fret. You could muffle the D string if you like. Or you could let it ring. You could just add the pinky to a straight E chord. All of these are variations on E7. The other one I like is using the C shape formation, but go up here to 5th, 6th, and 7th frets, and then add the pinky to the 3rd string 7th fret. If you're familiar with C7, this is simply a moved up C7. C7, D7, E7. Same rhythm. I like this one a lot. The other one you hear a lot in CCR is the A shape, seventh position bar with an A string root, so seventh fret of the A string, and then using ring on nine D string, pinky on nine B string, higher, brighter. So for just a basic rhythm part, I like this, or this. Similar sounds. This is a little thicker. So here's the map of the song. E7, one, a two, a one, two, three, four, da da dee da, a one, two, a three, a four, a one, two, a three, a four, da da dee da da dee da 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 da, one, two, a three, a four, a one, two, three, E again, two, three, four, Six, seven, C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, A, two, three, four, and Note that little riff coming from the A back into E on the A string, O, O, one, two, E, which is just this great little moment of punctuation where the whole band comes together. And I'm going to play that with the lead part as well. So, what we're going to do in the verse is do a call and response where the guitar is going to follow the vocal melody. Very, very close to the opening lick. It's just that the first thing I'm hitting is a bend on the third string at the second fret. And then as the bend gets toward the B, towards the whole step up, I hit the open E. If I happen to brush the B string at the same time, that's really okay. The effect we're looking for is a pop. So an upstroke works nicely for that. And then we follow with one, two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and just like the intro. So here's the primary lick. Da da dee da da dee da da. Da da dee da da dee da da da. So here it is with the primary lick. So here's this primary lick in verse one. One, two, three, four. Da da dee da da dee da da. Just kind of vamp on the chord, da 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 C, open or barred, A, and then O oh, one two. Now right there, end of the verse. Yeah, we're gonna bend the second string, third fret. 
that goes with the vocal. Yeah! Whole step bend. And then, jumping up to fret 5 of this string. Now, there's a couple of different ways you could finger this, but I think this is a sensible fingering given where we are on the neck. I'm jumping up to the third position. I'm going to hit fret 5 of the B string with my ring finger and do this. Fret 3 with the index. Shift over, my ring finger gets fret 4, then index fret 2, and then pinky fret 5 of the D string, small bend, down to fret 2 E. Now you could play this, but then you lose the bend on the G, or I think this is fine. 5, 3, 4, 2, 5, 2. So, I'm going to walk one more time through that basic part. I do, before I do that, want to show you, he plays variations on that main lick through the song. I want to give you one other that comes up in verse 2. Just a small variation, adds a syncopation and a hammer-on. One, two, three, four, one. Great lick. Same double stop, one, two, and three, and, but, ah! This time, the second time, we hit that, the second little group, one, two, three, four, and syncopated on an offbeat. One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and one, two, and three, and four, ah, da. So notice that fingering. Pause. See how that's on either side of the thumping beat? One. And then double stop, index finger, two string bar on three and two. Open G string, hammer the first fret. And then the high strings. I mentioned that I could play these with a hybrid technique using my middle finger to pluck the higher string, my pick, to pluck the lower. It's a good sound and it gives some more twang. get that thumb in there. I'll introduce this and I'll put this at the end of the tab just to introduce the variations. So what the tab will do is just go through the primary lead part in the intro verse 1 through the end of verse 1 and then at the bottom of the page I'll put in the variations. So now if I'm going to thump the bass strings with the thumb I'm using my fingers index and middle to pluck 3 and 2 and we're going to do this. 2, 3, 4, now, I find that a lot harder, partly just because I know there are lots of people that play with their fingers on electric guitar. I've never been as comfortable. I like the hybrid technique. I've been using it for so long, and it's also uh, given that I'm using my fingers primarily for acoustic finger style, classical and stuff like that. I tend to really tear up my fingernails on an electric guitar, so it's something I don't do as much of. But I will say that this kind of part works very well with a thumb pick. So I'm going to grab one of those sitting right over here. And what a thumb pick does is it allows you to angle the thumb out a little bit, extend it more and still get the base of the palm resting on the base of the strings so we get some thump, some muting, but at the same time I can get the fingers, the trebles, to ring. Now, if that's an unfamiliar technique to you, it is likely to be a significant challenge.
but just be aware that your thumb is an even timekeeper and so when you look at the riff what I would suggest is that you learn the riff without the thumb and be very clear on the timing one two and three and four one and two and three and if you're clear on that, then it's not difficult to at least see where the fingers and the thumb line up. One, together, together, thumb, together, together. Probably the hardest part of that is doing the hammer on. Letting that finger in the left hand slap down hammer the A string while your thumb strikes the E. This technique really deserves a whole lesson in itself. I've got some others on the YouTube channel. I will get into that down the road as well. So I just wanted to touch on that for those of you that are saying, well, wait a minute, it uses a thumb pick. It probably does. And again, as you know, if you watch my videos, you know that I am not trying to give you a definitive perfect transcription. I want you to learn the basics of the song. What I recommend you doing is that you go through and really be clear on the timing of the high notes. One, two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. Oh, one, two, and three, and four. Oh, one, two, uh, three, and. If you're clear on that, then matching up with the thumb is not that difficult, at least seeing where the thumb and fingers meet, because the thumb is constant and steady on the beat. One, two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. A uh, one, two, uh, three, and four. A uh, one, two, and three, and four. Now that really deserves a lesson all on its own to explore that style because there really is a lot to it. But I wanted to touch on it at least to introduce you to what's going on there. And John Fogarty uses a similar technique in Suzy Q. Now, to get back to our primary lead part, and this is what you've got in the tab. Where did my pick go? It's over here. And so this is for the intro and verse one, simplified version using the flat pick. One, two, one, two, three, intro, one. the bends are tricky down low on the neck like this as a rule you are going to want to have two fingers supporting the string supporting the bend and on the G I actually find to bend the second fret of the G string which is not easy that it works best sometimes to pull the string towards the floor that that's easier than pushing it up and notice that the movement is not just my finger, my arm, my wrist are both involved in pulling the string. And make sure you're not pulling the neck as you go. Then the bend at the end of the verse is with three fingers, index, middle, ring, sitting on the second string, frets one, two, three, and using the leverage of all three fingers. And the bend's a little slower because you match the vocal. Yeah! And then just shift up. So on the one hand, it's a simple song. On the other hand, there's a lot of subtleties to the techniques to really make it feel right, but I hope this is a good introduction. Again, the tab will have basically the primary John Fogarty part simplified a bit. 
going through the end of the first verse, and then at the end of the tab, I'll add in the variations. The thumb-picked version of the intro, and as well the variation on the lick with the syncopation. It's a great song, and the great thing about working on this is that you really get a snapshot of a lot of elements of John Fogarty's style. And so you will hear some of these same things all over Credence, which I'm sure you're probably aware of, or if you haven't noticed it before, you certainly will notice it now. I appreciate you watching, I'm trying to be more uh, consistent with how often I post these lessons, uh, especially since we're just home, um, trying to keep the content going. So thank you for watching. We also just hit 12,000 subscribers, so I'm really, really thrilled about that. I saw that this morning. Thank you for that. Keep watching, keep commenting, liking, sharing all of that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.